It's -a me, Mario. Today we're going to be eating huh? the meatballs and Hello dude, nice to meet you. My name's Liam and I wanted to ask you if you would like to be featured in my new video, The Future of YouTube. It's going to be a 100 creator collab and it's free form so you can put in your own words and say whatever you want. Oh sweet! I guess I could just say the usual things everyone says. You know, YouTube has its shortcomings, like the dumb algorithm hindering our growth. Animators becoming too samey, then I'll, I'll maybe end it off with a message of hope. That despite our issues, we are one of the most wholesome communities. Nothing can take that away from us. Yeah, something like that. Seems easy enough. I have plenty of time to make this. I'll come back to it. Four to six weeks later... Huh? Hi dude, if I can get your part for the collab soon, thanks. Huh, I should probably get on that. The future of YouTube, right? Uh, shortcomings, animators, hope, easy. Before I start, maybe I should check up on what's happening on- <gasps> Well, this just got a whole lot more complicated. They really just favor quantity over Some quality. Some people you don't put any effort into videos <coughs> like poke. make the algorithm favorable for animators who At upload once or twice a month. Okay. Don't ask them to change. That's YouTube. Don't even bother asking about YouTube. They're never gonna change. Never gonna change. Never gonna change. YouTube has a lot of problems. It's been having problems for a while now, and these problems just keep on accumulating. And I'll tell you right now. YouTube is far from being the idealistic utopia for content creators that so many people dream of. <laughs> far from it. Because of one simple fact. YouTube is a business, and it's having a damn hard time trying to be one. Now that is not to say that businesses are bad, I'm not anti-capitalist, but in YouTube's case, its problems stem from the fact that they are a relatively new kind of business. So it's understandable that they're having a hard time navigating a playing field that hasn't been touched before. Same could be said when TV, radio, or even theater of the olden days came about. They had a tough time adapting as well. And so did regulations. Especially regulations. Evidently, with all this talk of COPPA and the FTC, I'm sure you've seen plenty of videos regarding this so I'm not going to bother repeating what's been said, but this is a prime example of a system scrambling to adapt struggling with reforming outdated laws, keeping advertisers and creators happy, trying to appeal to everyone, but ending up appealing to no one. Or perhaps just one. It's very few people, very few sites are actually talking about who is pushing this through? They're just kind of blaming the FTC. They're not looking into who actually pushed it through. Ed Markey, we're gonna talk about Ed Markey. Now, Senator Markey from Massachusetts is the original house author of COPPA. He was real good friends with uh, Disney. Here's where the rabbit hole runs deep. Media giants are big donors to Markey. Time Warner, AT&T, Comcast, Sprint, Viacom, Disney. Now, what do you notice about those names? A lot of them have streaming services coming out. If people are going to places like YouTube, how the heck are they supposed to get all kinds of people to, to back their streaming services? Will you get rid of YouTube? How it's gonna be spun is your kids aren't safe on YouTube. Well, it's a good thing that they're safe over here on Disney+. Plus. This is where it gets tricky because basically the language is so vague, it can be abused at any point in time. Right, that's why they did it, I'm sure, so they can abuse it to whoever the media tells them. I mean, I'm sorry, whoever the government decides. They're trying to destroy YouTube. Destroy YouTube, this is another attempt, and it could possibly be Hollywood. They're threatened by YouTube. They want to control things, especially with the streaming wars coming. The streaming wars coming. The streaming wars coming. A war it is. As with any business, there is competition, and YouTube's got their hands full with a lot of them. Traditional media is dying, and everyone in the entertainment industry knows it. Streaming services are their last hope at keeping a foothold in the market. <laughs> Corner rat, and watch it bite as they say, and biting back they are. They know how much of a disoriented mess this system is, and they know how inexperienced lawmakers are. People making laws on this stuff? Don't own cell phones in 2019. Media outlets will take full advantage of this and use people like Ed Markey with connections to push these regulations in their favor. As much as we are currently bashing on YouTube and the FTC, they are not our real enemy. 
YouTube doesn't want this happening either. Our enemy are the media conglomerates. Jealous that the average Joe is creating animated content at home or just recording themselves playing a video game and are getting more views and are more enjoyed than their expensive studio-produced content. In their monopolistic minds, we are stealing valuable watch time from them. So essentially, this whole situation under the guise of protect the kids is really a battleground for getting eyeballs. And this battle will just keep on happening. As of recent though, COPPA seems to be clarifying their regulations after massive pushback from creators, but this is just a simple pawn lost in the larger game of corporate chess. The media will just keep coming back, and coming back, they've done so in the past, digging up more dirt on Google and YouTube, finding new ways to demonize YouTube celebrities, they will do everything in their power to make YouTube seem like the bad guy. And we are not helping, because we see them as bad guys too. Yes, YouTube has its problems, but to win this battle, we need to work with them as much as possible. And YouTube needs to listen to us and be fair to us. Whether or not we will ever form a stable relationship, I cannot say, but it is our only hope.